Today's collectible spots, we are having a look at the new Star Ace Underworld Evolution Selene six scale figure. One of Spot's favorite sci-fi slash horror properties out there was the Underworld movie franchise. Some of them were a little more harder to watch. I didn't really care for the Rise of the Lycans, but definitely was always a go-to for me for watching a fast, action-packed movie. Uh, finally, Star Ace has released a six-scale figure release of Selene. A figure that I always thought should have been released in six scale treatment or a character that should have always been released in six scale tri uh, treatment, but just never was. I couldn't figure out why no one ever uh, approached the the releasing or I guess making of Underworld six scale figures until Star Ace came around. So can't wait to get Celine out of packaging here. For your front of the packaging, we have Kate Beckinsale. Uh, one of her more memorable roles, I think, to many geeks and uh, fans of, of horror movies out there. Uh, she is uh, presented here quite nicely. And I don't know if you can see it, but if we just tilt the package slightly to the side, you got some uh, artwork there featured on either side of the packaging. So I like that. The side of the box, we have Underworld uh, Evolution Celine SA0033. And then on the back of the package, this comes to us from my favorite movie series, Underworld Evolution, Celine 1, uh, one six scale collectible action figure. Uh, there's a warning choking hazard. It's an adult collectible. It's not a toy. It's recommended for ages 15 and up. Lastly, just before we open up the packaging, I will also want to show you that the in the front flap is Velcroed. You can easily open it up right there. And there's another image of Kate Beckinsale on the one side. On the other side, you have Celine with her multitude of accessories, her crossbow, her sword, a series of uh, smaller weapons and interchangeable hands. That being said, Spot's going to take a break. I'm going to get this opened up. And when we come back, we're going to get a better look at the Underworld Evolution Celine six scale figure. I can't wait. There's more anyway, guys. Don't go anywhere. Now, of course, just before we have a look at Celine, like we normally do on this channel, we'll first have a look at the display stand that comes with the figure. The figure here has a fairly simplistic oval shaped displays where there's really no print or anything on the oval itself. I feel this would be a great opportunity not to have anything really busy on the display, but they could have at least put like the evolution font across the top there. You have Celine still featured on the front placard here, and as opposed to a crotch clip, uh, they opt to give her more a waist clip for adjusting. Um, a kind of more a preference to the actual hook where you can sit the figure on top of it rather than the waist clip. But this is the the option that they gave for the figure. Um, again, I'm not I'm not bothered too much by it, but I just wish that it was more the the hook clip uh, where the, the the Celine figure could stand on top of. Uh, but that is your display stand in a nutshell. Not overly again a busy display stand, but a display stand nonetheless. How does this figure stack up? Um, as a whole, I think it turned out really good. There was a few little tiny hiccups, uh, but as a whole, I think the pros definitely outweigh the cons. I think the figure turned out really good. Let's start with having a look at her face. The face actually might be the only thing that I'm a little iffy on when it comes to this figure. The clothing is good, the accessories are good, but the face seems... I don't know what it is. The face seems like it could be slightly off. It's also apparent to me as well that the eyes look as if they've been sculpted angled up, as if she's always looking straight up. I'm not really sure why they they did that, rather than not having the eyes more focused forward or ahead. It does look like more so that she's looking upward. Um, the 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 tone the skin tone is relatively pale but i mean that fits her pro, pro, profile perfectly of course being a vampire so i'm not really overly critical about the the pale skin that that makes sense to me but i feel like there's something slightly off on the face 
I want to say it's the nose, but I feel like it's perhaps the fact that maybe her her head is a little too long, which is throwing out some of the proportions. Because if you look at her eyes, and you look at her nose, and you look at her mouth in individual, you know, if you look at them in their individual components, it looks like Kate Beckinsale. But the overall seems slightly off, and I'm wondering if maybe the face is slightly too long, where it's not quite reflecting a, a, a true Kate Beckinsale uh, portrait. You can let me know down below what you think of this particular head sculpt if you think it looks like Kate Beckinsale. I do think it does, but I also feel like it's slightly off. The hair is, uh, they opted to give her a plastic hair sculpt as opposed to a real hair. And normally, I like plastic hair sculpts myself more so. It gives you a true defined look of hair uh, instead of some other six scale figures where, especially females, tend to always get... Uh, like the doll hair and sometimes if you sculpt it just right it looks good but in other times it never falls and sits the way I think a sculptor had intended whereas if you get sculpted hair on the other hand you can get, at least get exactly what the sculptor had in mind when they were designing the character or in this case the six scale figure so the hair I like you know, it's uh, it's just basically solid black as, you know, fits the profile of of a Celine here. So I don't have any issues with the hair. The face, for the most part, I think is good. From the side, I think, you know what, I think from the side more so, it looks like her. Front on, not as much. And again, I don't know why the eyes seem more angled upward rather than, you know, just straight forward. Now, when we get to Celine's outfit, it's uh, uh, several different layers. Uh, primarily, the main starting layer is that of a rubber, a like a rubber full body suit. She's got leather pants, more leather, I suppose, than rubber, a rubber top that has the zipper. Then she's got the halter bustier top, more the halter top with the buckles on the sides. And then she's got herself a trench coat. Now, I, I thought to myself when I was looking at this figure, does it re maybe read not as much as Celine because she's got her jacket on? So I kind of thought to myself, okay, well, let's take the jacket off. And for that, we want to just angle her head slightly. And uh, we could probably, we'll just take the hands off. Because I felt the kind of the same way when it came to the Eric Draven six scale figure as well. I thought, okay, well, in certain elements, if you keep the jacket on, I find it doesn't, it, it looks a little bit more like Eric Draven. Let's put the hands also on the right way. Uh, whereas if you took the jacket off, which is actually my more preferred look, I feel it didn't look as much like him or some of the shortcomings, I should say, started shining through. So I thought to myself, well, let's take Celine's jacket off. And to be honest, I actually think it looks more like her, and it's strange for me to say this, it looks more like her when you take the jacket off. Um, I guess maybe because she has then the thinner body that you can now see more prevalently rather than you know having the bulkiness of the jacket. And what we'll do is I'll, I'm just gonna put her right here, get her to stand. There we go. Let's have a look at the jacket itself, because I don't want to. I don't want to dismiss the jacket. The jacket is so nicely done. All these little intricate patterns that they put on the back of the jacket, as well up to the collar portion, uh, that would have actually been hidden underneath Celine's hair. The pattern also carries on down to the sleeve, right down to the cuffs where the the hands would be would be sticking out of. You can see all the interior stitch work of how everything came together. It's again a beautiful jacket, but I almost feel like I like her a little bit more having the jacket completely off. With the jacket off too, let's have a look at the halter top that she's wearing. And for that, we'll just kind of raise the arms up. Surprisingly, despite the fact that you would think that she'd have a very tight suit on, both in the pants and the the, the top here, she actually has a good range of motion and movement and doesn't seem at all restricted. I'll show you that more in a second. But the halter top here, or the tight fitted 
um, again, I don't know the correct term for it, but like the bustier, bustier top here. The girdle, it's not quite a girdle, but uh, it has some really nice intricate patterns also featured on the front there as well, as well as an, a very tight, meticulous stitching down the sides. You can see where it would have been snapped on her, although these are just uh, faux snaps. They actually don't snap together per se. And there's a couple of zippers on the back. I guess presumably if you really did want to take it off. And there's also the, the real threading on the back where this would have been constricted against her torso. Yeah, again, surprisingly, I think I like it more so with the jacket off. It just reads more to me like Celine versus having the jacket on. That's just, that's a, an opinion per collector, but that's actually, I think, what I prefer a little bit more. Then we get to her pants, and her pants are, again, a very tight leather material. And despite the fact that they are leather, much like the top, you can still get a good range of motion out forward and back, as well as a that double bend at the knee. Again, all of which we'll look at in a second. She's got her uh, thigh high, or I guess in this case, more calf high boots, buckled all the way down the sides. And you can see where it would have been laced and then strapped across, giving us a total of five straps down the sides. Despite the fact that she runs so much in the movie, she has uh, these kind of somewhat heel platform uh, style treads to them. And they've even sculpted the underside treads also. You also probably also see too that she's got these two holsters on the sides of her leg. These are mounted to her legs. Be careful. You don't want to accidentally tear these as they are. Uh, they look like they've been adhered right to the, the faux uh, leather material of her pants. Actually, while we are on the topic of Celine's pants... Let's start have a look. Let's start having a look, I should say, at some of the accessories that come with the figure. For starters, she comes with a pair of pistols. Pistols are painted nicely in silver. And it says USP Contact on the side there. Or Compact, USP Compact. And they both have removable magazine clips. Just slide those right out. And inside you have some a series of silver bullets. You can either have them holding in, or in her hand, which is probably going to be how I'm going to be displaying them, or the holsters that we were just looking at, simply the pistols simply slide into place into these holsters. The holsters, by the way, are a solid plastic rather than a material similar to how they were in the movie. She also gets herself one flying shuriken disc. In the movie, again, it kind of rotates and opens and stuff like that, but this is just a, a, a staction piece. Sculpted nicely, though, with the silver tips and the darker gray in the middle. She also gets herself a lone silver grenade, which actually has a real, little real loop metal pin to it. It's not removable, uh, it is just simply sculpted, but a nice little added touch given. A knife is also included. It's almost the same coloring as the, uh, as the grenade, although it does resonate and reflect the light a lot nicer, giving it a more realistic metal look. Celine also gets her sword, which plays a big role obviously in the movie. The hilt is a nice black handled tip, black handle to it. Some real nice decorative work to the top portion just before the blade starts. And the blade does a great job of reflecting the light in the same way that the smaller knife did. And one nice feat that they did too is that the handle is detachable. Simply just pull that off and you can slide it into the hands that we're going to be looking at in a second instead of trying to fight the handles into the hands, which is sometimes can be problematic. Lastly, Celine gets a very impressive crossbow, a crossbow that even Daryl Dixon would be very envious of. There's, there's a slight splattering of blood. I don't know if hopefully the camera can pick that up, but there's a splattering of blood around the main body of the crossbow. And there's all these individual slots. We'll look at that in a second. Now, when you get this out of packaging, there is a 
a battery restricting piece of plastic on the side. I took it off because the intent is that the light on the front here does light up. And I think it's only really this light. The light on the back does not, but the light on the front should be a bright white light. Um, it says actually that the batteries are included. Um, I did switch it on, however, and it does not light up. So I'll have to get myself some batteries to get uh, installed. You just unscrew, there's a little screw portion on the side here. Unscrew that, take this off, and you put, you're able to put the batteries in. I'm not sure why the batteries are not working. Perhaps the batteries are not included. It does say that the batteries are included though. Maybe it's maybe it's just the batteries are, are dead on this particular crossbow. Along with the crossbow, you get yourself six individual arrows, each having that very sharp silver tip to them. They are all, all the same to one another as well. And you can go ahead and attach them to the little slots here. They don't necessarily plug into place per se, but they sit into those little ledges. An accomplishment that seems difficult, especially when you're looking through your viewfinder of your camera, but you can get all six lined up in those slots. The easiest thing I found to do as well is when you put the arrows into the crossbow, put them underneath the real the real cording that is part of the string to the crossbow. Because the string actually keeps everything for the most part in place and the arrows will not fall out. As you could probably guess as well, you could take any one of the arrows and they can sit inside the little ledge portion. There's a little, I don't know if you can see it there, there's a little tiny thin ledge there. They don't sit the easiest as you can probably see one just fell out, but uh, you can just line those up in place and you can have something like that. Last but certainly not least, Celine comes with a series of interchangeable hands. She comes with a total of five hands, uh, and then of course including the hands that are currently in her sockets of her wrists. Uh, some hands suited for holding the guns, and then you have other hands suitable for holding, for example, the sword because it's more of a closed fist. And actually, this would be a good opportunity too to show how the sword works. Once again, we just pull the handle off, we slide that down to the hand, because the hand is so small, and then we just revisit the bottom of the handle. And it gives you a good secure fit without having to fight the handle all the way through the hand. Changing the hands, as you probably saw earlier, can be very easy. Just simply wiggle it off the peg on the interior of the socket. Revisit with the hand that you want to replace it with. And you're good to go. And now, Celine is all ready to hunt the lichens. For Celine's articulation, her head is on a ball joint. And it appears to only be one singular ball joint. Sometimes there's a ball joint at the top, ball joint at the bottom. It appears, though, that there might only be the one singular ball joint. But you can get her head to rotate all the way around, up and down as well. Her shoulders do move forward and back easy enough, as well as hinge out. Not restricted at all by what you would imagine to be a very tight outfit. But no, no, she has no issues whatsoever of moving her arms forward and back. She does also have a bend in the elbow, what appears to be a double bend in the elbow, as well as she has a rotation and hinge in the hands just simply by the way that the pegs work. Her torso, there is a crunch. Now this is the, about the only area where it's a little tight on Celine, just because she's got the, the top over top here. Uh, but it does have a crunch, very minimal movement though. Also can be said also for her waist, very little motion and, motion and movement there as well. Legs do go forward and back and out, as you already had saw. She does have a swivel cut. It's right actually at the top portion of her thigh. She does have a double bend at the knee, and she does have a rotation in her boot. Her feet are a little on the more limited side because even though it is a soft rubber, there's really not much you can do with the feet in the way of an ankle pivot or motion up and down. The more a spot looks at this figure, the more I love what uh, Star Ace has done to Celine here. Initially, I felt like it didn't quite look like Celine, 
But I don't know, funny enough, the more I have left the jacket off, the more I feel it actually does resemble her. It's not 100% spot on, mind you, but I think they did a great job on her. Uh, they have also produced a uh, underworld version of Victor. Can't wait to have a look at him as well. But if you're definitely a fan of underworld, I really would recommend picking this Celine figure up. Uh, it took forever for any company out there to give us six scale figures. It kind of seemed like a no brainer to me for uh, underworld six scale figures. I guess a lot of it was tied up with just licensing and, and the likeness properties of Kate Beckinsale maybe wasn't available at the time. But finally, we got ourselves a Celine, and I think she really turned out good. With the now inclusion of Victor, which again, Spot will be looking at in a future video, let's hope maybe as well that Staris might even give us some lichens. And I think that would be a great sight, having some of the lichens maybe around her as she's fighting her way out. Uh, today's collectible spot, though, we were having a look at the brand new Star Ace. This was the evolution of, well, Underworld Evolution. And we're looking today at the Selene six scale figure. Stay tuned, guys. Spot's going to have more collectible spots heading your way. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.